Oh, hell yeah! What is up, guys? Max Marvelous here with the 1,000 subscriber special, yeah! Thank you all who have subscribed uh, throughout uh, pretty much the uh, better part of the year. It's been a hell of a ride, hell of a journey. Gone through uh, a lot of different shit. Done uh, some TW, done some other video game stuff, whether it be a 2K17, WWE 2K17, NBA 2K17, and uh, recently with these, uh, I guess, narration type videos with uh, talking about, you know, like the rough times of New Japan, those mid-2000s, and uh, spotlighting videos like with uh, Astucio Nita and Los Gringos Logo, stuff like that, that's been a lot of fun, and I'm glad you guys have been enjoying it, and definitely it shows with the 1000 special. Don't know how long this is gonna go for because uh, I was just expecting, you know, like 10, 20 questions, nothing a whole lot. I got over fucking 50 of these questions. I cannot believe it. You guys are the fucking best. I was just thinking, oh, you know, I'd get you know, 10, 15 comments on the YouTube channel, might get a, a tweet here and there, might get an email here and there, but no! You guys filled up the emails, uh, filled up uh, the comment section. No, I don't think nobody tweeted, though, which is... Yeah. Whatever, you know, I gave three options. I figured someone would not use one of them, and that was that was my bet. So, I uh, predicted correctly. If you're... Uh, the video format for this is going to just be Overwatch footage. <laughs> I figured that would be the best way to make sure nothing gets uh, copyrighted or nothing like that. So, yeah, you can see me. Uh, sometimes I'm good at the game. Hopefully you'll see a, a best-of comp of my... Uh, of me doing well, you're not gonna see me get my ass kicked. So hopefully I have enough footage for that. I only got, I think, about an hour of footage stocked up. So hopefully uh, I don't go over my limit. As, uh, so we're just gonna keep a timeline on that. Make sure that's all well and good. But we're gonna start right off here with the YouTube comments. Uh, give you guys uh, the names of uh, who wrote the comments and the emails. I figured just leave that anonymous because I didn't know... Don't want to throw out the ship name out there, brother. <laughs> Don't want to protect the business out there. So uh, we'll just kind of leave that anonymous. So uh, right now we're going to start off with that gamer, Woody. Yeah. And uh, his first question, how are you doing today, Max? I'm doing fucking fantastic. Didn't do shit at work. Fucking was done. I work from uh, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. I got done about 9.30 a.m. Took a nap. <laughs> Took a nap in the break room. It was fucking fantastic. And, uh... Gonna be enjoying the holidays coming up. We got, uh, I'm recording this, of course, June 30th. About 7 o'clock. So, uh... Gonna enjoy the holidays uh, coming up. It's gonna be fun. But, yeah, I've been enjoying the day. Gonna try to catch up on some, uh, some wrestling. Uh, the, uh... I think the Kazuna Road shows... For New Japan, I haven't seen any of those, so I want to catch up on those. So it's going to be, gonna be a good day. going to be a good day. I'm doing this, so it's even better. And uh, second question, before getting into New Japan, what was your main promotion or company you watched the most? My favorite, I call it my main promotion, my favorite promotion of all time, is ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling. I fucking love the product, love the promotion, just the grungy, late 90s feel. Yeah, how adult-oriented it was, it was, uh, it, it was just a, a great time for wrestling, and it really kick-started, uh, a big uh, resurgence in wrestling here in the United States, with, uh, them, I, I figured around 1996, 95, they kind of really, the, the brand was out there, everybody knew about it, and, uh, it, it showed with, uh, WCW and WWE, WWF, time really taking uh their product and, and kind of going in that direction as uh you know i just love the a lot of it some of it doesn't hold up a lot of like uh tommy dreamer and sandman tommy dreamer raven a lot of that that doesn't really hold up but you know uh jerry lynn sabu uh, jerry lynn and rob van dam from hardcore heaven 99 that's fucking phenomenal uh a lot of yeah, you know, Mike Awesome, Masada the Naka matches, I fucking love them. A lot of people, they can't watch it now with the, everybody knowing what concussions and how dangerous they are. 
but I'm just, you know, I, I kind of, after seeing a lot of those matches, I kind of try to keep tabs on what's going on with Masato Tanaka's life, just checking in on him, <laughs> making sure he's not lost his fucking mind, because Jesus, he, he took a toll, he took a toll with those matches, and, uh, you know, uh, some of it, and, uh, super crazy, Yoshio to Jerry, those kind of type matches, and, uh, so, you know, there's times, you know, hey, I love seeing a new Jack run in every now and again, you know, and shit like that. I, I love just the product itself, the Pulp Fiction type promos they'd run, uh, just the way it was done, it was phenomenal, I, I enjoyed the product. So, uh, that, uh, that will do it for his questions, we're going on to 370 Gaming, oh yeah, my buddy, good buddy, 370 Gaming. As uh, he has a question, uh, who is your favorite XXL freshman of the years 2016 and 2017? Oh man, okay, 2016 XXL freshman of the year class. That was, I believe, the little boat, little yachty, little dicky class. Between those two, those two, that's a toss up. Really, I'll go little dicky for my favorite XXL freshman 2016, 2017 X. X go give it to you, X, 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 and Tessian. God bless that man. I can't believe look at me what got on the Billboard charts. That's crazy times. Crazy times with these, uh, the music charts. Un unbelievable times. God bless that man. X, 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 and Tessian. As, uh, that will do it for his questions. He just sent that in. Thank you for that. As now we're going on to Goofy. Goofy Willows. Oh, yeah. As he has three questions, how big is his dick? As, uh, how big is Goofy's dick? Well, Goofy, it's as big as Vince Russo's ego. Yeah! <laughs> Fucking nailed him. Burned him. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll like that now. He's just gonna turn off the video over like, fuck. Thanks, Max. Uh, so, uh, that's, <laughs> that's that question. Question two. How did you find the TW community? I started out uh, with the diaries, is what they were called, on like uh, the, uh, I think they were called the EWB Battleground Forums, and that's what it was called, and uh, Calls WS had a section where you could do it, and basically that was for EWR stuff, and uh, when I saw uh, New Legacy Inc., they did a uh, EWR kind of playthrough of WCW, in 98 and I just was like oh shit maybe other people kind of do it in like YouTube form and uh, yeah and I just typed in like TW on YouTube and you know, like TW I think the the recent one that was I was TW 2013 and it brought up uh, let's play TW which was uh, next channel saw uh, the uh, New Japan series subscribed all the way thought it was awesome loved the uh, that idea that showcase of tw instead of the the diary forms are are great for like submergence into the world of it but uh, it's a lot uh for personality if it's a great personality someone who can kind of showcase their uh, kind of vision or uh, sometimes even do the impressions of guys it's a lot of fun to watch them so uh yeah there's Kind of how I got my, uh, that's how I found out about the TW community as a whole. Then, uh, found out about the Fantasy Booker's Reddit forums, which I was a part of. Till recently, just kind of stopped, uh, because then I stopped uploading TW content, so I stopped showing up there. And then his final question, are you a smark? And, uh, this is a, a kind of funny thing about me. Uh, you will never hear me call myself a smark, a mark, anything like that. Uh, which, even now, like, a smark, like, nobody, who the, no one's a smark anymore. Everyone is on either Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everybody's talking about wrestling on the internet. It's not like it was back in the, like, mid-2000s when everyone was calling people smarks when it was on message boards. But, uh, yeah, you will never hear me say, uh, that. It's not... The origins of the word and the origins of it being used in pro wrestling, it started off back in the carnival days of pro wrestling, where uh, kind of the uh, the promoter of the carnival section of the wrestling, I guess you could say, whoever the hell ran the carnival, 
guess so. The carny, there we go. I got it. <laughs> the carny is, uh, he would kind of take a, uh, talk to some of the people, uh, the guests of the carnival and kind of pick their brains, maybe, you know, do a big presentation, kind of see who was buying into it. And, uh, he'd have some chalk on his hands and he'd kind of come up to the guy or, or the girl, I guess, depending on who it was. And kind of pat him on the back and kind of be like, hey, what's going on, good brother? You know, you want to take a take a stab at the wrestler? You know, five dollars. See if you can last five minutes with the wrestler. And uh, he'd have mark him with the chalk on their upper back. So it would tell it, all the other carnies in the uh, carnival, like, hey, this guy's a sucker. He's a dumb as fuck. Like, he'll... <laughs> anything you... Uh, Kind of any tricks you have up your sleeve, use it with him, because he'll buy into it. He, he's a dumb fuck type of thing, which that's kind of thing I'm not. You know, I try not to say I'm not a dumb fuck. I kind of have my own opinions. I know I'm a, a you know, I'm a, I am an educated fan with pro wrestling, but I will never call myself a mark or a smart mark. But it, if somebody does, if someone calls themselves a mark or a smart, I just kind of let them be. Just it's no, no big deal. I won't think less of you. <laughs> but it's just, it's something I do. It's weird. It's a weird thing I do. As, uh, then RBM316, he asked if uh, when I uh, continue doing the 370, uh, the series with 370 Gaming, the New Japan series, which we just recorded. So basically, uh, we never talked about this. The schedule that we have for the New Japan series is we try to stay up to task or at least a little bit behind the actual New Japan schedule. We try to stay uh, roughly close uh, proximity to them so we can use uh, 370 can use the VTRs gimmicks and stuff make it look a whole lot better <laughs> put a lot more presentation and production values into it so uh, just kind of I don't think we ever said it in a video so figured say it here just in case someone stumbled across it wanted to know what the uh, what our schedule always was when so there you go <laughs> and now we have uh, next uh, person who asked a comment was uh, Jesse James. He's got four questions. God bless. I guess really it's not really a question. This first one has a uh, congrats on the 1,000 subscribers. Thank you. I'm uh, glad. I uh, didn't think I'd ever get to this point. So <laughs> kind of just on cloud nine. As uh, he asked his uh, second question. Is uh, your top 10 Ring of Honor world champions? Oh shit. All right, I guess we'll go uh, worst to first here. We'll go 10. We'll go to uh, Takeshi Morishima, 10. He was different. You know, the first Japanese pro wrestling champion. He was the man, Morishima. I think Kenta would have been a better fit as the first ever Japanese champion, but Morishima was awesome. Uh, you know, how he beat... He kind of killed Homicide to win the belt. I just... It was a, a interesting time to have the Ring of Honor World Champion be defended over there and no one stuff. It was, it was a cool time. It was kind of like the first, like, oh, this is a world title type of thing. Oh, I guess the first time it was technically considered a world title was when they went to uh, the UK for FWA show. And now, uh, who was the champ? I think it was Joe. I think Joe had a match and defended it. So, uh, yeah, there's more Shima at 10. 9 would probably be Adam Cole, and that's probably a little low for most people. He is the first ever, first and only three-time Ring of Honor champ, but I just never felt his reigns were long enough and cemented enough to be like him with the belt. I just figured, because they were always, like, close. They, they, you know, this last one was, like, 56 days. The last one, you know, he beat Lethal when he was on the uh, undefeated, you know... The, uh, the year-long title reign. Yeah, I just never felt he had a reign that just was his. just felt it was just title reigns. It was never just one full run. I'd I rather have that, the long stretch, than the short stretches. That's just kind of a, a personal uh, preference for me. Eight would probably be Loki. If I had to guess, Loki would probably be eight. Uh, just... He was the perfect style for Ring of Honor, that kind of... He's... A lot of people uh, say a lot of negative things about Loki. Outside of the ring, he's a fucking dipshit. <laughs> if he wouldn't have taken himself so seriously, he'd be phenomenal. But honestly, I think that crazy driven... Uh, him thinking that it's, you know... 
he can legitimately beat people and that type of thing. I think that's why he's so good and that style is so different of his. Because he truly believes it. Because, man, there's nobody that wrestles like him. And it's just... He, he's like a, a guy from Mortal Kombat come to life. That's always, I always called him that. You know, the, with all of his kicks and the fucking... That hit... He has the be the most beautiful Phoenix Splash I've ever seen was Low Keys and Noah. He got fucking up there. It was awesome. Like, he could do so much cool shit, but just in the deep voice. Like, he was just a ki he was just a character in himself, but I think, uh, kind of personally, outside the ring, people have a problem with him. And then, I'm kind of, the way I always looked at guys, even with uh, people like Floyd Mayweather, I can respect his boxing accolades, even though I hate him, like, outside the ring. I, I can respect him as a businessman, as a promoter, but, like, he's just kind of a piece of shit, woman-beaten motherfucker, but, uh, he, I can never deny he's a phenomenal boxer. He's probably the best defensive boxer there's ever been, just as a sport, and to, for points and whatnot, he's a phenomenal boxer. And that's kind of how I always see it. There's the person inside the ring, and there's the person outside the ring. And I, I view them on two different things. I Same thing with actors. I'll view an actor as someone who is on screen and then off screen. You know, it's... Some people don't, and that's just the thing I do. Number seven. Back to the list here. Uh, number seven. Jay Lethal. The man. God fucking... God bless Jay Lethal. God, that that year long reign was just awesome. Him and Truth, the House of Truth, I loved it, loved it. Never thought he really had that phenomenal match though. You know, I loved the Jay Briscoe match, the best in the world. But uh, when he won the both belts, well, were they guessing when he won the world title? But uh, I don't think he ever really had another match like that. That was just phenomenal. That, that year, that final battle match he had that year. Who the fuck was it he wrestled? Damn. But that, it was a good match, but it wasn't phenomenal. I remember it. I, I remember the match. I don't remember who it was against, though. Now, not off the top of my head. Uh, number six. Tyler Black. Tyler Black, Seth Rollins now. Uh, he was, I think, the first guy. Who I saw the beginning and the end of his career in Ring of Honor. From the Age of the Fall stuff to that. To uh, when he left for oh, uh, FC Dub. And uh, the WWE. Thought he was awesome. Uh, just. Uh, he probably could have been a lot lower. Now that I think about it. Because the rain. He had like a great match with uh, Davey Richards. I think I was probably. In, in his match. His feud with Aries was awesome. But I always preferred Aries to him. But uh, that's why Austin Aries is number five. Austin Aries, God bless him. Greatest man who ever lived, A-double. Fucking love him. Uh, glad he came back from his injury and he had... He, even though, you know, his, his matches with Neville, great. Hopefully he can sink his teeth into something else. That 205 Live, man. It's so There's so much great wrestling out there now. It's so hard to keep track of it. But uh, now the, these past since Neville's been champ, they've this last stretch here in 2017, these past couple of months, they've really put on some good shit. If you uh, you know got some spare time, <laughs> got I I envy you to watch 205 Live. I, I love that style, so I, I I miss out on that. And he's having a, a great run. I love his Ring of Honor run. Some people say he he had one of the better. He has like a top reign like ever. But I it's great. But I don't think it's when when he beat Joe, when he when he stopped Joe's reign, that was a great moment because he they made a guy with that. He was a generation next guy, and then he jumped into this guy's the next thing in Ring of Honor. You felt it, felt it when you beat when he beat him. Going in with uh, number four, Kevin Steen. Now uh, Kevin Owens, I fucking love him. He, he's the best. One of the most entertaining guys uh, on just during his Ring of Honor run when, uh, it, you know, the shit with Cornette and stuff. It was a fun time. It was a fun time. Loved this feud. His t you know, the Stenerico team and the feud when they uh, when he turned on him. It was just great. Great stuff. And 
him as champion. I think he's been the last great champion. Jay Lethal had a great run, but I don't think it fi it was nothing quite like Kevin's run. Kevin, like the world, was talking about Kevin's team. I felt like the wrestling world was talking about him. If Jay Lethal was like, you know, everyone, you like the injection, <laughs> but uh, not not really. Everyone was talking about how great you know he was. Uh, but the the, the People who liked him more, but I don't think the whole world was talking about him. Down now, down to the the last three here. At number three, Nigel McGuinness. Definitely the uh, the top uh, foreign world champion there's ever been. Nigel McGuinness. Yeah, I when he uh, when he got that hep, hepatitis and he, and he stopped wrestling, I was that crushed me because he was fucking awesome. It's crazy how he was, you know, around that time, 2007, 2008, he was the top 10 guy in the world. And, uh, how, you know, and the shoulder injury, he couldn't get the, uh, he had a, uh, didn't know about his fucked up shoulder when he, uh, took the physical for WWE. Because he would have been there, him and, him and Brian together, and that would have been awesome. That would have definitely helped WWE in 2009, <laughs> 2008 for sure. Having those two on the roster. But uh, yeah, that's fucking Nigel Lariat. There's... Well, the first time I saw Nigel's Lariat, I didn't like it. But I, I grew to like it over the years. I thought it was too slow. I loved when, uh... When, like, Luke Harper would do it. Now, kind of recently, he'd bounce off the top rope and do it. I, I love that. It's fast. It's quick. But, uh... Yeah, Nigel. Nigel the 3-2. Samoa Joe. What a rain! Probably the best rain ever. And uh, what just the he's one of the best. Like him and Brock, and there's been a, a couple of guys over the years, but in him and Brock in these past in the uh, in the two thousands in the twenty tens has just been a, a perfect monster run as a champion in Samoa Joe. That rain. It was, once it got, uh, once Punk didn't beat him, it was kind of like, it was awesome, because I thought for sure Punk was going to beat him at, at Joe and Punk 2, and uh, when that didn't happen, it was like, holy fuck, what, <laughs> how long is this thing going for? And uh, he definitely, uh, I wouldn't say that's why he was number two, because when I think of you're the number one person as Ring of Honor World Champion. When I close my eyes and open them back up, and you just think who's like picturing who is the Ring of Honor World Champion, I think of and he's number one, Brian Danielson. I uh, just the because he fit the style so well. He had a great run as champion as well. He was he had, he was there for a pretty long time. You know he was there from the beginning till uh, 2009 had phenomenal matches throughout the years from top to bottom from the uh the very first night the triple threat the uh the crown the uh crowning of the champion the uh, fatal four way uh match the you know his matches uh his match against AJ Styles in 2003 it's fucking great the stuff with Morishima his uh match with Homicide a final battle just great shit Great shit, all around. Anytime he stepped in the ring, it was awesome type of thing. And uh, yeah, so he, he's definitely number one. And uh, yeah, that was my uh, top ten. As uh, now we're going on to his third question, Jesse James's third question: Thoughts on the Ring of Honor CZW feud? Big fan of it. Love both products. Seen the Ring of Honor product and the CZW product, especially the CZW product at the time, with uh, Necro Butcher, Chris Hero, Nate Webb. Uh, wife beater, Zandig kind of running the company, but still kind of every now and again doing some, some, uh, loved it, just loved the feud, one of my favorite, uh, Cornette's promos were great, uh, whenever, uh, when they had the, the CCW show, oh, I'm sorry, when they had the Ring of Honor show in the, uh, old ECW arena, and the CCW guys invaded, and a uh, fucking wife beater brought the uh, <laughs> brought the weed whacker. It was just awesome, just crazy. Super Dragon, 
Holy shit, I, I just, just remembered he was fucking there. Holy shit. God damn, imagine, that was the thing, I don't think they ever did that, I don't, I don't remember them doing that on the feud. It's Dragon and, uh, oh no, yeah they did, they did Dragon and Joe during that feud, that was fucking awesome. They either did that feud or another show, another promotion, you know, like IWA did that, I'm, man, that was fucking awesome. That and Joe and Necro Butcher, that, those were just brutal, brutal goddamn matches. And uh, loved that they did Cage of Death, and uh, the promos with Cornette. Uh, there's a promo Ace Steel cut one, and he's like, "My dying wish, <laughs> my last dying wish, is that everybody from Combat Zone Wrestling to fucking die." <laughs> it was just one of the funniest things, and just yeah, Ace Steel's face, he's fucking nuts. And, uh, the match itself, the Cage of Death match, with Brian being an asshole and turning on Joe and turning his back on Ring of Honor, and Cornette coming out going, What the fuck? <laughs> you screwed me, you bastard! <laughs> Cost me the shit. And Homicide coming back is just awesome. Awesome. Uh, a lot of people don't like it, though. A lot of people, because a lot of people don't like CZ Dub, don't like seeing Nate Webb <laughs> and Necro Butcher in Ring of Honor. But I, I loved it. Because it felt real. Because it was, it was real. It was. You knew Cornette fucking hated Combat Zone Wrestling. You knew. Brian Danson looked at CZW and went, that's fucking garbage. You just knew it. It, it was it was real. Like, it was a real thing. <laughs> like, they were two complete polar opposites of each other. That was probably the last great, like, invasion of a faction. Or uh, the last great, like, invasion of a company that there's ever been. And, because they're so hard to do, because someone's got to lose, and no one wants to in this fucking sport. Everyone wants to, you know, everyone wants to win clean with their finish, so, but someone's got to lose. And I felt like that was the perfect way of doing it, because it brought in guys like Hero, brought in Necro Butcher, brought in guys that uh, Ring of Honor used later on down the road. So I, I loved it. And, uh, Jesse's final question, thoughts on Kenta versus, uh, Marfuji? Fucking awesome. <laughs> Fucking awesome. The first time I saw a full Noah match was Kenta Marafuji from the Autumn Navigation Show in 2006. And it was just the goddamn best. Because I'd seen the first full Kenta match I saw was him and Brian at Glory by Honor 5. And that was just a fucking spectacle. <laughs> that was just... Kenta was amazing, and uh, just wanted to see more, because I, I knew about New Japan at the time, obviously, uh, in, around, uh, from the best of the Super Juniors, and, uh, or uh, the uh, Super J Cups in the 90s, and uh, WCW's alliance with them, but I had no idea about Noah, like, I just had no idea until the, uh, you know, the power of the internet, and uh, Kenta, spe you know, specifically Kenta and Ring of Honor, and, uh, when they bring in uh, some of the, uh, and just, I guess also bringing in like, Bison Smith. Who, uh, God bless Bison Smith, I miss him. Bison was the man. Uh, Bison Smith and Marfuji, uh, Taiji Shimori, kind of when they bring in those guys. Masao, hey, I know about Masao and Kabashi from uh, all Japan, but, you know, the, the Noah brand. And uh, they, were the, they were just the top dogs at that time. In those uh, mid 2000s, 2005, 2006, yeah, or even then, you know, even 2003, really, from 2003 to about 2006, they killed, they they were killing it, awesome shit. But yeah, they're, uh, I wouldn't say they're my favorite Noah feud, Kenta Marafuji, just because you know Masawa Kobashi, it's just it's fucking, because I'm I'm a fan of like old Kobashi lesser than all japan kobashi that's kind of a weird thing to i know that's a weird thing to say like when he came back from the brain tumor uh and he, he is having that last run of noah from you know 2002 to 2000 and uh i think 2008 from like him and the Sawa matches him and junaki yama him and kawada him and uh joe <laughs> from fucking ring of honor that was always that was awesome just all those matches and uh, the chops and the the physique, it just the in Masawa too. Like uh, I love you know Dy 
uh, Masawa from Tiger Mask 2 era Masawa and All Japan era Masawa, but old man that Masawa, he just looked like he went through a fucking war. Like, you, you could see it in his face. I don't know, something that didn't really surprise me. It was sad, but it, it didn't surprise me when he passed in 2009 in the ring, because it was like, that motherfucker just, it, he looked like, like, you knew he went, he saw shit. Like, he just was just defeated. Just, anytime I, they, they come over for Ring for, uh, Ring of Honor in those years, in, you know, 2008, 2007, he just, he just looked like death. <laughs> it just looked like, had that, you know, stone face. Just looked like he would beat the fuck out of you. But, uh, they're definitely, I don't know if they're the, they're probably the greatest feud of that era, of, of the mid-2000s, you know, throughout Kento and Marfuji. Because they were great as a, as a, uh, as opponents and as partners, as, as a tag team as well. That's the same thing with Masao and Kobashi, they're the same thing, you know, great as partners, great as opponents type of thing. But, uh, you know, they, they were awesome. Love both those guys. So, but Marfuji being the, the G1 again this year, but, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Glad, glad to lose you the, so I guess it's either way, I'm, I'm always happy. Uh, going to the uh, next uh, question here from Tom. As, uh, how big is Batista's dick? <laughs> I was waiting for this question. Couldn't wait. How big is Batista's dick? It's bigger than Hornswoggle. Like, it's Hornswoggle standing up and down vertical-wise. It's still taller. It's bigger than Hornswoggle. So however tall Hornswoggle is, he's probably what, 4'6", four, 4'7". Four, <laughs> he's probably taller than that, maybe, I don't know. But, <laughs> so yeah, there's that. <laughs> and, uh, next uh, set of questions here. From Tom Reaper LT. As he asks, rank these promotions, CZW, TNA, New Japan Pro Wrestling, OVW, World Culture Pro Wrestling, WCPW. I, uh... Uh, basically rank them from uh, first he was these were the first ones that come to mind and uh, also uh, is Batista's dick bigger than El Tari oh it's all yeah this is all over the place yep I probably should have kind of proofread that a little bit more I'll I'll redo that question I was like oh, I'm all over the place okay so uh, I want you to rank rank these because these are the first ones that come to mind. So CCW, TNA, New Japan Pro Wrestling, OVW, and World Culture. And then also, oh, also again, what? how big is Batista's dick? Is it uh, bigger than El Torito? Well, I guess uh, if Hornswoggle's bigger than El Torito, then yes. If not, then uh, no. <laughs> just uh, just barely. Just just a tad bit. So uh, ranking these worse the first, I'll go... Uh, World Culture 1 as the worst, just because I have not seen a whole lot of World Culture. Kind of, uh, kind of a shame. Plus, they're kind of slowing down now with the uh, YouTube kind of fucking up the ad revenue. I don't think they're going to be around for much longer. OVW, next. Uh, they're at second, the worst. Uh, when uh, Cornet was running it, it was actually really good. I had heard stories about, you know, Cornet's uh, OVW, how it was just kind of really good shit and seeing it in like observer ratings saying that you know it was like second and third for like best weekly television show I was like wow that's kind of crazy for like 2001 and 2002 and I mean it's not bad it's not bad at all it's really good shit but uh, it's not phenomenal I don't think it uh, by any stretch of means there is some stuff that's kind of cool to see you know with John Cena Brock uh, Batista the Leviathan uh, you know, Shelton Benjamin, all those guys that kind of went on to become big stars. It's always cool to see that. FCW is kind of the same way in around 2011, 2010, when uh, they signed, you know, John Moxley, Tyler Black, and uh, kind of that whole crew. Uh, Bray Wyatt had just repacked, well, Husky Harris had just repackaged into Bray Wyatt around that time. And it was just a really fun time. Uh, as uh, watching back, I'd watch on uh, Daily Motion <laughs> every week. Those were uh, those were fun times. CZW probably be the third in that uh, list. Love me some CZW. Combat Zone, yeah. 
And then uh, TNA second. They had a lot more. Uh, they they haven't been around as much as New Japan. That's why it's so hard to have. Of course, New Japan's got to be number one. Just New Japan's been around since 1972. Whereas TNA's been around since 2002. It's kind of hard. Yeah, because most of these promotions have only been around for you know ten odd years. Because New Japan's been going at it for almost, uh, god damn, almost uh, 45 years now. Jesus. Long time. Long time. And then we're down to the final comment. And I saved the fucking best one for last year, I guess. Is we got Chad Talks. Get a f little F Mary kill. Get a fuck one. Get a marry one. Get a kill one. 370 Gaming, J Mac Gaming, and Chad Talks. Well, Chad, I'm gonna fuck you right off the bat for submitting this F Mary kill, and uh, just you know, for the for the thrills, let's see what uh, see what Chad talks is all about. Let's see if he's good in the sack. <laughs> and uh, then we're gonna marry 370 just uh, for the YouTube money. Listen, he's getting up there. Eventually, uh, gotta gotta I gotta think financially. He can support me. I can be a be a be a housewife for him. Just uh, work on <laughs> work on his YouTube channel for him. Be uh, rendering videos for him. Since uh, I, I discovered we we kind of discovered it takes me about twenty takes me about ten fifteen minutes to render like a twenty thirty minute video. It takes him about forty. <laughs> so definitely help him out for him. And then uh well that leaves old J Mac. Listen, he he might have not been killed if he was submitted the question, but now. Nah. I'm not gonna hold it against him. He was that, uh, that fucking, uh, the gimmick, the electric force gimmick. So he was having, having the time of his life out there, so I don't blame him. So those are the comments. Thank you all who co submitted your comments. Appreciate it. A lot of fun answering, picking the brains of a lot of you guys. And now we're going on to the emails. As, uh, the first one, if you were to make a Mount Rushmore of WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling, what would they be? Oh, shit, okay. Okay, so WWE, gotta go with Bruno San Martino right off the bat. He's, the kind of like the George Washington, he's the, he's the fucking godfather at all. Second person would probably be Hulk Hogan, for what he did in the 80s. He fucking transitioned WWE, WWF at the time into New Heights. Just in the heights I'd never seen before. With the Wrestlemania era. Kicking off. And uh, I'm a big Hogan guy. I really am. I think. Uh, I don't think there's been a lot of guys. That can just captivate an audience. Like he could. The way he just hawk up. And people loved him. People fucking loved him. That's for sure. And the third. Spot Steve Austin. Arguably the biggest star. Uh, biggest star during the biggest era. As far as ratings and pay-per-views and all that good shit, Steve Austin. There's oh Stone Cold Steve Austin. There at the third spot. And the fourth spot, probably The Undertaker. I mean, it's the best character they've ever done. Longest tenure, almost 25 years, goddamn near. Just, uh, and it was kind of the, the father's locker room, just the kind of held shit down. He could have fucking left when shit hit the fan in 1995 for greener and better pastures. Could have left for the money. Could have left for that Ted Turner money in WCW. But he fucking chose to stay. And uh, he was... He kept a lot of people in line too. Shawn Michaels. And uh, during those years, that 95 to about 90, 97, 98 when he uh, left for the uh, those four years. He was a piece of shit. Somed up, not giving a fuck. Real piece of shit. And Taker had a kind of a lot of times, you know, kind of the story about WrestleMania 14. Taker was kind of afraid. Um, Sean might not do the job, so he kind of st <laughs> stood in gorilla, taped fist, ready to go, just in case he didn't want to take the fucking job. Ready to go. That's the type of guy he was, and how many guys he probably influenced over the years from either the the fucking just the drizzling shit guys the giant Gonzalez's, the king kong bundies of the fucking world and uh nathan jones and fucking and you know, all those guys 
Big Show, fucking, on the fucking great Kali, you know, fucking dear hell, he should get on that spot just for dealing with that bullshit. But uh, that's probably if that's not a Mount Rushmore for WWE, I don't know what is, man. That's that'd be my Mount Rushmore for sure for WWE. New Japan. I'll throw Ricky Dozen on there, even though he never worked for New Japan. It was uh, JWA, Japanese Wrestling Association. But, uh, you know, technically. Listen. Give me a break. <laughs> just give me a break on that. Uh, if not, I'll just throw Anoki on there. But Anoki was going to be on there anyways. If uh, wouldn't let me have oh, Do Ricky Dozan. So, uh, if, if Anoki replaces Dozan, then Tanahashi takes Anoki's spot. So, just kind of confuse you. So right now, we got either <laughs> version 1, Dozan and Nanoki so far, and now the third spot, Kaiji Mudo, the great Mudo, arguably the most over babyface they've had. Before it's all said and done, Kazushiko Kai's gonna take that role. He'll probably, I mean, it's all, he could take it right fucking now, honestly, but I uh, have a soft spot for Muda, and the plus if they ever, like, carve out a Mount Rushmore for, like, New Japan, we all awesome to see, like, half Kaiji Muda, half Grey Muda. So that's kind of my thing. Uh, really, it'd probably be Okada. Or Tanahashi, too. You know, either one. Fourth, Juice with Thunder Liger. Same thing with Undertaker. It's just been there forever. The tenure, the character. He is New Japan. You know, he is the, uh, the Lion Mark type of thing. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely... Shushin Thunder Liger. The fucking man. Fucking. God bless Liger. Liger son. The man. So there is that question. And then uh, we get a, the next question going on here. What are your favorite sports? Or what are some of your favorite sports rather? Uh, you know I'm a big fan of sports. I'm a big uh, sports guy. Big fan since I was a kid. Was, uh, sports and pro wrestling. That's what kind of fueled me through the childhood. It fuels me now, you know. Uh, you know, I love, love football, American football. Love football. I love uh, probably my favorite uh, NFL team, Baltimore Ravens. Favorite uh, MLB team, you know, I love the Reds, Cincinnati Reds. Lo love watching the Dodgers, too, the LA Dodgers. I've got a couple of teams I kind of, the Cubs, you know, love that they won the uh, the World Series there this last, uh, last year. That was awesome. And, uh, then basketball, Cavs, of course. But there's a lot of a lot of fan, a lot of different players too in the NBA. And uh, with the football, Manchester United, very casual fan. Don't know fucking shit about it. Know very little, very very little about Manchester United. So please bear with me if you want to try to talk Manchester United. I probably watch a game once a year <laughs> just to check in, see if Wayne Rooney's doing well. Type of thing. But yeah, those are really a lot of my favorite sports. Uh, college sports, you know, college football, Ohio State. Got a couple of uh, co colleges I like seeing, like LSU, if uh, seeing SEC games, Ole Miss type of thing. Uh, a lot of the underdogs most of the time just watching type of thing. So there's, there's kind of my favorite teams, favorite sports. And uh, next uh, question here. What are some of the mods you would like to see in a TW game? Rather it be fantasy or real life? All right. Favorite mods you would like to see? I would love to see a fantasy mod of Overwatch characters. I think that'd be really fun to do. Really fun to see. Uh, because there's just so many cast of characters who do so many different things. Don't know who would be like... Uh, the problem is that with that is that you don't know who would be a ref. Don't know. I guess you could have... Uh, just, uh, don't know who would be a ref, who would be a manager. I guess all the healers could be managers. That, that'd make some sense. That'd make some fucking sense. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of something I'd love to see would be, uh, an Overwatch mod. Uh, real life? Uh, I would love, you know, with TW 2016, there's, uh, there's been so many TW mods over the years. I think just about everybody's done a mod of a certain year. Been kind of waiting on uh, the mod squad to do the 2011 mod. That's going to be a lot of fun to do. Uh, waiting for uh, the 2005 mod that was out. 
it's still a little wonky. It's a little wonky. A little wonky. I wish that get a little tweaked a little bit more. Uh, would love to see a 2002 mod just for uh to redo like the draft and stuff. But uh, love to see a lot of. There's been some great 90. You know the, the war. Eye of the Storm, I think it's called, you know, the 92 mod, uh, with the mod squad, what they did with the, uh, attitude era, that was great, from, uh, pre, uh, it was a November 97 and December 97, and then, the, like, the Art of War, and, uh, I guess I would love to see, uh, 2000, I, I love that year of 2000, because it was such a, uh, a unique time in wrestling with WCW being in the shitter. ECW was looking awesome though. Looking to turn a new leaf. And uh, the WWF was such a weird time. You know, the catastrophic. I hated that WrestleMania 2000 main event. That fucking fatal four way. God, that was the fucking. That was the worst. <laughs> Fuck Triple H, of course. He's got a win. Shithead. But uh, yeah, I would love to see a 2000 mod, 2002 mod. There's a lot of different. I guess years now I think about it that, that haven't really been done on this year's game. But uh, I'm sure, you know, there's uh, there's there's a lot of shit. Uh, I heard uh, the Who, Who87 is doing a, uh, a fantasy mod with uh, a WWE, uh, I think it's WWE Domination, I think he's calling it. That's, I always love that type of shit, like uh, idols, like IDOM uh, mod, I love that shit. So I, I, I can't wait to see that come out. So that's something I've been waiting on, been keeping tabs on. So uh, there's uh, there's that, and there's that question. As uh, now, uh, gonna ask another question here. As uh, what is a, a top match, your favorite match of each year you have been alive for? Oh shit! Okay, so since '95. Oh fuck! All right, so '95. Probably go with, uh, there was a tag match that year. It was, uh, Kiro Taue and Kawada, to Toshiaki Kawada versus Kunta Kobashi Misawa Misawa. A lot of people say that's the one of the best tag team matches of all time. I fucking hated Kiro Taue, and even then I can agree that match was fucking amazing. Phenomenal tag match. Really good shit. Yeah, that's all Japan. Uh, it's a, like one of the Power Series tours. I forget which day. <laughs> Uh, 96, fuck, 96, probably Shawn Michaels, Mankind, In Your House, Mind Games, what a fucking match, the pacing, the, the contrast styles, two completely, those two couldn't have met each other, they went around the world fucking twice type of thing, and it was phenomenal, phenomenal match, I think that if for some odd reason you had never seen Cactus Jack McFoley before that time, you uh, you were definitely a fan after that. Because uh, that, that match was unbelievable. Unbelievable. 97. Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio Jr., Halloween Havoc 97. Just fucking barely, though. That fucking WrestleMania 13, Steve Austin, Bret Hart, I quit match. Or a uh, submission match. I almost fucked that up. Submission match was just fucking great. That was from like that match. It also the you know uh, the Hell in a Cell, Bad Blood '97. Personally, we'll get into the the, the next year '98. I already know what my the match of the '98 year is. I guess we'll just go into that '98. Mankind, Undertaker, King of the Ring '98. That Hell in a Cell match. Jesus Christ, that match was unbelievable. That, uh, that match was great. And it's actually, no, now that I think about it, I think I actually, uh, somebody asked, oh yeah, there it is, uh, that gamer Woody actually asked that. Yeah, this is, I forgot to answer his third question. Uh, which match sticks out in your mind that made you forget that wrestling is a scripted sport and really got you invested in the whole story? Nothing has really gotten me to that point, uh, just because from a young age I learned it was, uh, you know, it was a, the television is predetermined type of thing. But this match... This match is unfucking believable from a story perspective. I thoroughly enjoy that match from a story perspective. So many people. That is now a template for so many matches now. From uh, the uh, 
Zero, Zero Miero match from uh, Ultimo Lucha uh, from Season 1 of uh, Ult uh, Lucha Underground. Pentagon Jr. and fucking uh, Vampiro. And uh, also the Sasha Banks uh, Charlotte fucking Hell in a Cell match that first effort where someone gets fucking jumped before the match. Big spot happens. Either, you know, with the, the Zero Miero match, you know, he took like a fucking powerbomb to the floor or some shit. They was like either a powerbomb or a suplex, some shit on like a concrete floor. And uh, with the Charlotte Sasha match, it was like a big powerbomb. Like, where Sasha was, like, hanging on, off the cage and into the announcer's table. And, uh, they always, and they kind of, like, steal the template of, oh, is the match over? Can the, someone continue? But then they come off the stretcher and they come back fighting. And that, it's kind of been done to death now, but this, this. I thought the Vampiro Pentagon Jr. match, when they did it, I thought it was fine. Didn't have no problems with it at all because it was different. It wasn't a Hell in a Cell match. It was a little bit different. It was different enough to not go, okay, this is blatantly copying the formula. But that, but the fucking Charlotte Sasha match, I couldn't stand it. I was just sitting there, just twi just sitting there looking at my phone, just waiting for them to just be like, eh, yeah, this match. And, <laughs> and just waiting for them to kind of go, uh, waiting for the pop for Sasha to get off the fucking stretcher. Which they got. I mean, they fucking got it, but... As a, uh... Kind of a, a fan who... Who's seen all... Who's seen it all. That type of thing. is just like, ah, uh, god damn it. But, uh, you know, of course. I mean, we're talking about 1998, and that happened in fucking 2016. Like, a Jesus, Max. Just... Give it. It was, <laughs> it was a fucking long time ago. They can, they can take from it, but... Yeah, it's... Love that match. A lot of people say that match, the Mankind and the Taker on the Cell match, it's just two spots. That match is way more than just two spots. I mean, it's... Th the Him keeping on going, knowing that he is so fucked up. Je uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, sound bites was from Jerry Lawler. When uh, he went through the cage... And he just landed and he just goes, that's it, he's dead. <laughs> it's just, because you, you knew, because you just kind of, they had done it before where the ring kind of like implodes. The ring would usually implode when that type of shit happens, uh, or it would cave in. Like, I remember the big show, uh, or either the big show got choke slammed or he choke slammed like Kane or the Undertaker, the ring kind of collapsed, like caved in. You kind of knew that's what they were going for, but this, that fucking ring was hard as a rock. <laughs> he fucking nailed it. And he just unbelievably finished that fucking match. And he fucking did a run in in the main event of that fucking first blood match between uh, Austin and Kane. Unbelievable. That would have killed a normal man. Like, and he just does a run in. Unbelievable shit. That man, I fucking big fan of Mick Foley, as you can probably tell from the, you know, it's, we're already two years in, he's got two matches <laughs> of my, of each year. As, uh, we go into 1999, Kendo Kobashi, Miss Mamasawa, another Power Series tour match. Probably the, my favorite All Japan match from them, as, uh, just fucking brutal. Fucking brutal. Misawa Kobashi, can't beat it. Can't beat it. It's like Tanahashi Okada now. It's uh, just, you throw him in there, it's gonna be fucking great. It's just one of those things, it's five, it, I don't rate matches, but if I did, it's like, it's five stars for the bell rings type of thing. Uh, 2000, Cactus Jack, Triple H, Royal Rumble 2000. What a fucking match. This match made Triple H, made him, solidified him as this guy's here to stay. What a fucking match. War. Absolute war. From the thumbtack spot where Triple H pedigrees him through that fucking tax. Face first. Through, uh... Fucking... Uh, Cactus getting his fucking handcuffs getting killed with the chair. It's just, it's a fucking war. It's a war. And it made Triple H. I, I truly believe that. It, Cactus has done that for so many people. Did that for Triple H. Did that for Orton at uh, Backlash 04. 
he, he, I've never seen a guy that could elevate someone so well like him. He's just unbelievable. Unfucking believable. As uh, we're going on to 2001, Steve Austin, The Rock, WrestleMania 17. It's just, it's the pinnacle of wrestling. It really was that moment. It's like wrestling will never be that hot again. It's the, because after that, ratings fucking tailed off because he turned heel. Uh, Steve Austin. I love the turn, the idea of the turn, the handshake, the end. It's kind of like the solidify. It's the picture moment. It's the video moment of them ending the Attitude Era. Steve Austin and Vince McMahon shaking hands. What I would have done, just a little fantasy booking here, the next night, you know, Vince comes out, Oh, I did it. It took me four goddamn years, but I did it. I got that rattlesnake. Everybody's got a price type of thing. Everybody turns. And then, uh, Austin kind of interrupts him there mid-speech, and because oh you dumb son of a bitch, <laughs> Vince McMahon, it's April Fool, <laughs> it's April Fools, you dumb bastard, DTA, you dumb son of a bitch, and it hits him a stunner and just kills him, and walks off like nothing ever happened, type of thing. But then that solidifies you because know, WCW just ended, solidifies maybe old Vince McMahon. He's like that's it, Austin, you screwed me for the last time. He brings in, like, Goldberg or something for backlash type of thing. But, uh, they went a different direction. <laughs> yeah, they, they completely fucked that up, probably. As I uh, go to 2002, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, SummerSlam. Goddamn well match. What a card. That's one of the best pay-per-views they ever did, SummerSlam 2002. Not a bad match on that fucking thing. When your opener's Kurt Angle and Rey Mysterio Jr., you got a good fucking card. Just unbelievable shit. Michaels. This, uh, I was so excited to see this match. Even though, uh, I was a Bret Hart fan as a kid. And seeing, uh, the screw job happen and all that. And, uh, knowing kind of later on how much of an asshole <laughs> Shawn Michael was personally. Even though I tried not to do that. You know, I'll admit, he was the fucking man. But, man, he was a piece of shit. But when he came back, that babyface run. From fucking 2002 to 2010, there was nobody better. He was fucking awesome. He, I don't know how the fuck he did it. How you can just take off for four years and just come back. Top of your game. Unbelievable. What a match. What a story. Phenomenal build. Just loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. 2003. Kendrick Kobashi, Mr. Amasau. Again, this time there are no match from fucking, uh, think, uh, is that, uh, Automatic Navigation? I think that was it. I could be wrong. I think that was it. No, no, it wasn't Automatic. No, what the fuck was that? Fuck, I forget the show. But, uh, it was awesome. It was fucking great. It wasn't the Tokyo Dome show. It wasn't, uh, fucking. Uh, Destiny was not that show. It was the other show. I remember that though. <laughs> but th that was better than that match. It, that Destiny show was awesome. Uh, the Destiny match was awesome, but this was better. This was number probably their best match they ever did, in my opinion. It was this Noah match? So if you uh, if you for some fuck reason you have not seen that match, go watch it. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, Two thousand four. Chris Benoit, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, WrestleMania 20, main event, triple threat match. It, uh, it's hard to talk about now, but, uh, soft spot for me. I remember watching it, I, uh, I was in the second grade when this happened. And, uh, my parents, they told me they'd buy me, uh, the WrestleMania pay-per-view if I'd get, uh, straight A's. And I, I got straight A's just because I wanted to see this match and I wanted to see... Goldberg and Brock Lesnar, which fucking, Jesus Christ, that fucking match, and then, uh, you know, Taker was coming back, Eddie and Kurt, you know, there was a lot of cool shit, or at least there was, there was some cool shit, and, uh, that match, that was fucking awesome, when Chris made Triple H tap out, that was such a moment, that was a fucking 18 year journey, 
of him working his goddamn ass off from WCW, or from ECW, from WCW, from Japan, fucking all over the world. And even though he won the belt, you know, it sold out that fucking one day, <laughs> beating Sid, where it made Sid tab with his foot was over, under the ropes type of bullshit, but uh, that type of shit, uh, you know, it, it's I, I don't think I've seen that match since the the day I found, you know, the, the, the news let out on that night in 2007, that, uh, that day, that day it happened, uh, the, the day the news came out of what happened with the double murder-suicide thing, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm glad Brian had that triple threat match, that 30, because now no one will ever talk about that match. And, and rightfully so. You know, sometimes there's moments where outside of the ring it can harness, it can tan, it, it will uh, tarnish you inside the ring. I can still look at Chris's matches and treat them as th this was fucking amazing. But uh, when Nancy and Daniel get in there and, and celebrate with him at the end, it's fucking rough. That's a rough one to watch. That's. But it's, as a match, it is unbelievable. It's a phenomenal match. If you're a new fan and you never saw it, just because, you know, obviously no one's going to talk about it, it's a phenomenal triple threat match. It's a phenomenal match. Even though I just spoiled it, the fucking ending, so probably don't watch it now. But, <laughs> just, but uh, so scratch that. <laughs> but it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, 2005, the uh, TNA Unbreakable Triple Threat, AJ Styles, Chris Daniel, Samoa Joe. This, uh, this match, just like the Triple Threat match, it, uh, this should have been the turning point. This should have been it. Uh, uh, yeah, I had a question that, there was a couple of, uh, questions like who, would you rather prefer this person or that person, or kind of comparing others. I was just going to call it the buy or sell segment. That's go that would be later on. Uh, uh, we're about to have emails here, but that's uh, that's kind of how I got a lot of them. Were just uh, kind of who who do you think's better type of thing. So I just slot them all together as a and uh, figured just make it a buy or sell. And somebody asked, uh, what do you think's better, the X Division or the uh, WCW Cruiserweight Division? I think the X Division is better because the X Division had the opportunity to be what TNA was about. It should have been when they got on Spike TV in 2004. They should have dropped the NWA title and had that X division be all right. You know, you know what WWE they can have their fucking slow boring bullshit with their new stars, their John Cena's, their Dave Batista's, their Randy Orton's. They can have that. We have AJ Styles. We have Samoa Joe. We have Loki. We have Christopher Daniels. We have. The some of the best fucking talent we have abyss, we have guys who it's not about weight limits, it's about no limits. It's guys who can work back then, it was the independent style. But you look at fucking WWE now, you look at all those guys AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, Samoa Joe, fucking you know, when Brian was up there, when Punk was up there, fucking Kevin Steen, Sami Zayn. All those fucking guys who, the Adrian Neville, fucking anyone who worked at independent style is now up there. And they're putting on main event matches and they're doing that fast paced style. When that, that independent style, that's what I always called it, was the indie style of the 2000s. A fast pace, quick action, and now everybody loves that shit. And that's the style. TNA had it. They had it in 2005. Instead, they're like, let's book NWA guys. Because let's have the NWA World Champion and Planet Jarrett. And we'll have that be the main event. We'll have those guys be the marquee. When you have... You can have Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe. You could still have that match. And it could still be for the X Division title. You could have Christian Cage work the X Division style. You could have Shelton Benjamin... If you could, you because definitely you could swing Shelton Benjamin, I think, away from WWE. If you're like, listen, man, you can come here, you can main event pay per views, man, you can main event television tapings, uh, you could be a top guy 
here in TNA with this X division. And they never did it. Joke's on them. Now they're fucking, you know, I, it's, uh, I just saw fucking Anthem is now replacing uh, TNA with Global Force Wrestling. It's now Global Force. Unbelievable. How the fuck does Jeff Jarrett do it? <laughs> Unbelievable shit. That uh, now we're going. Keep on going here. 2006. Uh, the Brian Danielson Kenta match from Glory by Honor Five. This was you know first time I saw Kenta. So it's this is a, a fucking soft spot for me. I love this match. Phenomenal match. Brian top his game. Kenta top his game. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal match. To the you know, this was uh, what uh, I believe I had the second on my uh, top 12 Ring of Honor matches. Phenomenal match. <laughs> phenomenal match. Alright, and then we're going on to 2007, uh, the Noah Tag Match, Kenta and uh, Taiji Ishimori versus Kota Ibushi and uh, Namuchi Marafuji. This tag team match is fucking awesome. It's not as good as Tawei Kawada Kobashi Masawa match. It's not as good as that match. But as a junior heavyweight fast paced style tag team match, it doesn't get no fucking better than that. That match was awesome. Four guys that could just fucking go. And now, they're still awesome. It was fucking ten years ago. All four of those guys can still fucking go. That Noah, man. Fucking mid-2000s Noah. Unbelievable. Good shit. Good shit. So now we're going on to 2008. Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 24.